Hi, my name is Toluca from Markers and Minions, and I've got six tips to share with you for when you are working in Google Slides. Tip number one, never put the presentation in present mode. Even though this is technically a slides presentation, we're not using it as such. When it's in present mode, you won't be able to interact with the slide, meaning you won't be able to move any of the graphics and you won't be able to type onto them. So when you're working in a Google Slides presentation, keep it in this regular view. Tip number two, adjust the zoom. So sometimes if you open up a slides presentation, the slide will appear to be too small. You can remedy this by clicking on the magnifying glass and then choosing the fit option. This will automatically snap it into place and this is now a comfortable size to work off of. If you're working on a tablet, all you need to do is zoom in and zoom out using your fingers. Tip number three, the undo button right up here is your best friend. Anytime you make a mistake, if you resize something, if you accidentally delete something, or if you move something where it shouldn't be moved, you can undo it immediately. And you can actually undo several steps at a time. So let me show you what that looks like. If I accidentally resize this, now it's too large. I'm going to click undo. The first time I click it, it's going to snap it back into place where it was before. And the second time I click undo, it will restore the original size. So as you can see, I was able to go back two steps just now. Tip number four, click on the center of your image or graphic in order to move it. If you click on these outer edges, it's actually going to resize it and we don't want that to happen. So you're going to click or tap right in the center, hold it down and drag it and drop it. In order to drop it, simply release your click or your tap. Tip number five, never request access. If you ever get to this screen, there are two possible reasons why. The first reason, which is more likely, is that you are toggled back and forth between a personal account and your school account. So perhaps your parents are logged into their Gmail account and this assignment is supposed to be accessed only through your district email account. So a way around this is to log out of all your Gmail accounts first and then try and open it again, logging into your district email. The second reason why you might come across this screen is that your teacher may have incorrectly shared it with you, meaning that they gave you the wrong link. If that's the case, just go ahead and politely ask them to send it again. And last but not least, tip number six is for working with text boxes. When you're working with text boxes, click directly onto that placeholder text to begin typing. You can highlight or backspace in order to delete the text and then you can provide your answer. Now, text boxes are slippery, meaning that they can move around and easily be resized by accident or even deleted. Now remember with my previous tip that the undo button is your best friend. If you're working with text boxes and you make a mistake, just undo until your mistake is fixed. Now another option, which is especially useful if you're working on a tablet, is to double tap or double click into a text box to begin typing. So watch what happens. When I double click, I will immediately be given this cursor, which means that I'm able to start typing. Now if I start typing, like for example, hi, then I still have all this other text here. You can use your finger or your mouse or little arrow keys to move to the end and erase. Now sometimes you have that text there to hold your place to show you where the boxes are. Like in this case, you can't actually see the border of the text box. In other resources, for example, in something like this, you might see the box and therefore you don't need placeholder text. But if you're working with something that says, click to type or type here, and you don't want to have to delete that every single time, here's a little trick. Go to edit, find and replace, and then you're gonna type exactly what that placeholder text says. So click to type, and then you're going to leave this blank because you want it to replace it with nothing. 
So now I'm going to click replace all. And now they're all gone and you don't have to erase that before you begin typing. Also, when you're working with text boxes, say you need to insert your own text box. Now, up at the top here is the tool for a text box. It's a T with a little square around it. You click on that, draw your box, and then what I always recommend doing is creating a white fill color and then putting a little border around it just so I can see where my box is. Now alternatively, what I actually prefer to do is insert something called a table and that's what I like to type into. Now for example, this resource here has tables and not text boxes and I'm going to show you how that's different. When I click on this, do you see how there's a larger blue box around here? Now, it's really easy to just start typing right into your table. It's not as slippery, meaning it's not as easy to accidentally move them or resize them. So if you ever need to insert a place to start typing in one of your assignments, you can go to Insert, Table, and we just need one text box and then you can drag it you can resize it and decide how large you want it and then you can just go ahead and start typing right into it thank you so much for watching I hope this video was helpful remember we are all just doing the very best that we can and I know that you've got this